Hi, I'm Denshi, and today we're going to be taking a look at Bedrock Linux, a Meta Linux distribution that allows you to mix and match components from other distributions and install them to your system. Like, for example, here on the home page, they give the example of using Debian stable core utils. So this system itself, this virtual machine, is a Debian GNOME virtual machine. You can use Arch's cutting edge kernel or Void's run it in it system, a PDF reader with custom badges automatically maintained by Gentoo's portage a font from Arch's Arch user repository or all of these various things that you can install from other distributions and basically add to your system. I'll explain how all of this works later, but first let's go to the installation guide. So the first thing we're going to want to do is scroll down here and go to this link that says from here. This is essentially a big paste of all the links to the various variations of Bedrock Linux one can install. So in this case, it's an x86 system, so we're going to copy and paste this link. So then what we can do is open that in our web browser and just download it from the link. So as you can see, that's downloaded. We can then go back to the previous page here, change directory to our downloads directory, and then run that. So we're going to do sh dash Bedrock Linux, and then it's the version and the architecture. And we're going to use a dash dash hijack flag, which then installs Bedrock Linux properly. Although before we do that, we have to give it sudo as to have root permissions because we're quite literally almost changing the distribution here. So press enter. We're going to type not reversible like that. And off it goes. We have officially installed Bedrock Linux. So now that's done, we have to reboot our system. As you can see, we're getting a bedrock in it. We're just going to, I get, I think, press one so we load up our Debian system. So we're back in our system now. We can open the terminal again and we can run BRL Tutorials Basic to get a tutorial on the basics of Bedrock Linux. So I have two separate tabs, one here to run commands and one here to check the tutorial. So we're gonna begin by reading this. Welcome to the Bedrock Linux Basics tutorial. This tutorial will introduce you to the minimum Bedrock Linux specific background required to utilize and manage a Bedrock system. This tutorial assumes familiarity with common Linux environment concepts, such as a born shell-like command line, as well as a working internet connection and a couple of gigabytes of free disk space. Open another terminal with a born like shell alongside this one to follow along with the tutorial. So that's what I've done. I've opened a new tab over here. And then there's basic things like, oh, if you see a dollar, that's like, you know, a non-privileged user action. If you see a little uh, number symbol, that's a privileged action. So something you got to do with sudo or so. And now we're going to press enter to continue. So the first thing it wants us to do is run these commands. So brl fetch dash dash list will list something called the strata. So the way that Bedrock Linux works is that there's various stratum or strata that essentially act as layers because that's what that means. Strata means layer. And you get layers of different distributions, one of them being our core distribution, Debian, and then on top you would have Bedrock Linux and then on top you would have Arch Linux or other things. So you have to install all these layers using the brl fetch command to actually get the functionalities of that distribution, such as the package manager. So the first thing we're going to run is brl fetch dash dash list. And as you can see, those are all the possible things we can install. So we're going to first of all install Alpine and then void. So that's going to be sudo brl fetch dash n tut alpine Alpine. So that's going to install the Alpine Linux basics once we've typed in our password. Forgot to put a space there. Whoops, it's dash n with a space. Okay, so we've successfully installed Alpine Linux as a stratum in our bedrock strata. So we essentially have added that as a layer to our bedrock system. Also, just before anybody asks, here's a NeoFetch and oh, look at that. It's the cool bedrock system. Ooh. Anyway, now we have to install Void Linux. So just let that run and it should finish quite soon. Okay, so we've now installed installed void as well. Let's go back to the tutorial and see how that's progressed. Okay, so we're now on part 3 of 18 of the tutorial, and we can now learn to use the APK and XBPS tools from Alpine and Void Linux, respectively. So if you've ever used Alpine or Void Linux, you'll be familiar with these package management systems. And we can install programs from the Void Linux or Alpine repositories on this Bedrock Linux system, because that's sort of what Bedrock is all about. So for example, we're going to install JQ from APK and Joe from the Void repositories. So sudo apk add jq and then sudo xbps-install joe. So both of those are installed. We can move on to the next step where we run this command to test them out. It's just a program testing out both tools with some pipes and it posts bedrock, so yay. 
Okay, so here's an example of how manual pages work on Bedrock. So we're going to install JQ doc with apk and man with xbbs. So sudo apk add jq doc, then sudo xbbs dash install dash y man. So both of those are complete. We can move on to the next step. Just copy this command that pipes them. And what this will do is have Void's man program, which we installed with XBPS, read the JQ documentation we installed with APK. So Alpine installed the JQ documents and Void's man program is going to read them. So just copy paste that. And as you can see, it's reading the manual. Anyway, this is more of an explanation part of the tutorial. On a bedrock system, every file and every process is associated with some stratum. The BRL which command can be used to query bedrock for this association. So let's try it. Which strata provide the apk and xbps install command? So we can run this command to check where another command comes from. And as you can see, it says alpine. And the same will apply if we run that command with xbps install and it'll say it comes from void. But what about commands that multiple strata use? Like for example, ls. We can do brl which ls and as you can see it states debian. Makes sense that it has to pick a stratum here, but why that one? Keep this question in mind, as it will be answered later in this tutorial. Which strata provide PID1, the init system, and PID9520, this tutorial? So BRL, which one? That's the init system. And 9520 for the tutorial. It also says Debian. Which strata provide slash, or the root directory? BRL, which slash, and as you can see, it also comes from Debian. Again, sure, it has to pick one, but why that specific stratum for the root directory that multiple strata provide? Like the LS situation, this will be answered soon enough. So what this tutorial is saying is, why is it picking only Debian and not the other stratum? It makes sense that it has to pick only one to display, but why Debian specifically? Which strata provides bedrock at cbedrock.conf? So we can try checking this one as well. And as you can see, it says global. Wait, that last command output was global, but we do not have such a stratum. What's going on here? To avoid conflicts, processes from one stratum may see their own stratum's instance of a given file or lack of file at a given file path. So this is why the stratum providing your shell, BRL which, sees its own directory instead of another stratum's. If your shell's stratum has an Etsy OS release, it will probably correspond to your shell stratum distro. So if we run that command, you'll notice that it says Debian. So that's why we were getting Debian with all these previous commands. This is needed to avoid conflicts. For example, Debian's apt needs to see Debian mirrors at Etsy app sources.list, and Ubuntu's apt needs to see Ubuntu mirrors at the same path. So essentially what Bedrock Linux does is it changes what each stratum can see to give them the illusion that they have access to certain files. This is needed to avoid conflicts. If they saw the same contents in sources.list, these two programs would conflict with each other. In Bedrock terminology, these file paths are described as local. So we have two words, stratum and local. If all paths were local, so things that only a specific stratum can access, strata will be unable to interact with each other. For strata to interact, there are also global paths. So that's what we were looking at before with the Bedrock configuration file. That's globally accessible because all the stratum need to see that file. File paths where every stratum sees the same content. Under the hood, there are bedrock files which are being shared with other strata. For example, all strata see the same contents in slash run to communicate with common sockets. So if you run that command real quick, brl which slash run, you'll see that it's global because all the stratum have to be able to see that. Directories like slash home and slash temp are also global. So you can have one software from one stratum like Alpine's JQ read files created by another stratum like Void's Joe, provided the file is in a global location. So if you run this, you'll notice that this is a global location. If we echo the following thing to temp, you'll notice that Alpine's JQ is also able to see that. Sometimes processes from one stratum need to access local files from another. This is achieved via cross file paths. If you want to read or write to a local specific file given to stratum, prefix slash bedrock slash strata slash stratum to the file path to a cross that is stratum. So for example, if we check what this belongs to, you'll see that it will say bedrock Linux. And then if we check the contents, you'll see that it also says bedrock Linux. However, if we check BRL which for the file in the tut alpine repository, so the alpine stratum, you'll see that it's owned by Alpine, and the file itself details Alpine. Bedrock strata is only suitable for reading and writing cross files. To execute a program from a specific stratum, prefix strat stratum. 
For example, if you care about which LS you want to run, strat, tut, alpine, LS, dash, dash, help. So for example, you can run the strat command to specify a specific strata that you want to use to run a command. If you do not want to specify the desired stratum with strat, Bedrock will try to figure one out from context. If Bedrock is configured to ensure one stratum always provides the given command, it will do so. For example, init-related commands should always correspond to the stratum providing PID1. This is called pinning. If the command is not pinned to a given stratum, but is available locally, Bedrock will utilize the local one. This is to ensure distro-specific dependency quirks are met. If the command is not pinned and not available locally, Bedrock assumes the specific build of the command does not matter. In these cases, Bedrock will search from other strata and supply the first instance of the command it finds. The first bullet point is why reboot comes from the init stratum. If we do barrel which reboot, you'll notice that it's owned by Debian, because Debian is the stratum that's giving us the init system. If we do brl which ls, You'll notice that's also Debian because that's the first one Bedrock Linux is able to find. And the third rule is why APK and XBPS install work despite being from different strata. So what it's saying here is that because APK and XBPS are exclusive to Alpine Linux and Void Linux specifically, it's able to automatically run those under the correct stratum. So Alpine Linux for APK and Void Linux for XBPS. Occasionally, software may become confused by Bedrock's environment. Most notably, this occurs when build tools scan the environment for dependencies and find them in different distributions. To handle this situation, strat's dash r flag may be used to restrict the command from seeing cross stratum hooks. So strat dash r is able to tell a specific program not to search through certain stratums. For example, Normally, tut void shell can see tut alpine's apk, but if you restrict it, it cannot, and this command will fail. Bedrock will automatically restrict some commands that it knows are related to compiling, such as arch's make package. If this is a problem for any reason, you can unrestrict with strat-u. In general, if something adds oddly under Bedrock, the first thing you should try is to restrict it. This is especially true when it comes to compiling software. It is sometimes useful to have stratums files on disk without them being integrated into the rest of the system. To do this, disable the stratum. So you can do sudo brl disable tut void and completely turn it off. This will stop all of the stratums running processes and block the ability to launch new ones. This command will not fail. Strat tut void xbps install dash dash help. So you're not going to be able to run any void Linux commands once you've disabled void Linux. And obviously you can re-enable it with brl enable. Strata are each responsible for updating themselves. To update tut alpine, we can tell its package manager to update with apk update and apk upgrade. And to update tut void, we can just run the xbps and install update command, and Bedrock itself can be updated via BRL. Manually updating all package managers as shown in the previous section may be a bit tedious. Other multi-package manager workflows, such as searching multiple package managers to see which provides a package, that can also be tedious to do by hand. To resolve this, Bedrock provides a utility called PMM, which abstracts multi-package manager and cross-package manager workflows. PMM mimics the user interface of other package managers. Open bedrock etsy bedrock.conf as root and find the user interface field under the PMM section. Populate it according to the surrounding comments if it is empty and then run BRL apply. So this is a cross-platform package manager that Void Linux has in it. So if I just go into the etsy bedrock.conf file, so I'm gonna vim into that. So sudo vim bedrock etsy bedrock.conf then we go down all the way to where PMM is. It's a clever name, Package Manager Manager. I'm gonna have it mimic Pac-Man because that's what I'm personally familiar with. So I'm gonna edit this and type in Pac-Man because I like the Pac-Man Package Manager from Arch and that's what I want PMM to behave like. So we run sudo brl apply to update the configuration files. So I guess we can run sudo pmm dash s y u and i'm assuming just like pac-man with that command it's going to update the repositories and it's also going to update the software this is really clever because it manages all the various package managers you have on your system from debian's one to xbps to apk with alpine we can also run sudo pmm dash s and then the name of a software like for example audacity or something let's try installing gimp that's actually not a lot 84 megabytes but uh 300 110 megabytes of install space, that's, that's a bit. But as you can see, it's downloading everything quite quickly. I believe this is coming from the Debian repositories, but I'm not 100% a, a sure. But that's the PMM package manager. I obviously configured it to be like Pac-Man with 
the dash s commands and stuff but you can configure it to be like i'm pretty sure they have options for various package managers like debian's app so you could do pmm dash install and that'd be like apt dash install as well so as you can see that just installed gimp and if i run gimp i think it should be open it up so the next part of the tutorial is about removing stratum so you can use brl disable a stratum so you have to disable it before you remove it and then brl remove to remove that stratum you can add a dash d flag to the brl remove to automatically disable it before removing it and needless to say you have to run all of this as root so first of all it's going to have us disable and remove alpine for whatever reason so sudo brl disable touch alpine and then the same command but we have to type in remove and then the same thing for void but before we add the dash d flag so it automatically disables it while removing it so we've stripped our system of all of these extra linux layers the stratum currently providing pid1 the init may not be disabled as the linux kernel does not respond well to pid1 dying given brl which one this command will fail brl disable debian so we can't disable the stratum which is currently providing the init system which is debian if you wish to remove the init providing stratum first reboot and select another stratum to provide your init for the given session the bedrock stratum glues the entire system together it is the only stratum which may not be removed when bedrock hijacked this computer it moved the previous install files elsewhere added itself to the root of the file system and added the previous install as a new stratum called Debian. So Debian has become a layer of this larger bedrock Linux system. Now that the hijack operation is completed, there is nothing particularly special about the Debian stratum. You're free to remove it should you wish to do so. So make sure to install anything essential that Debian is providing, such as the bootloader or kernel or sudo in another stratum. So what we could do is install, say, Arch Linux as a stratum, then install everything we need in Arch Linux, like you know, system D and all that kind of basic stuff to our system then reboot and boot into Arch Linux and just remove Debian. And that would work perfectly fine because that's what Bedrock Linux is. It allows you to mix and match various parts of different distributions. If you would like to make a stratum for some distro that BRL fetch does not support, simply get that distro's file somehow, such as installing them in a VM and mounting the VM image, copy them into Bedrock, Strata, New Stratum Name, be careful to prefer permissions and symbolic links, and then run BRL show the name of the stratum to register the new stratum with Bedrock, then run BRL enable to begin to use it. So that's how you make your own custom addition to the Linux distribution. So if you want to add a distribution which currently isn't in the Bedrock Linux, I guess, repositories for stratums. All of Bedrock's configuration is placed in the single file bedrock etsy bedrock.conf, which we looked at before when we changed those rules with the package manager. If it seems like something Bedrock does should be configurable, look in there. After making changes to bedrock.conf, run brl apply to make sure they take effect. For example, run brl dash dash help and notice how pretty and colorful the output is. Now open dash bedrock etsy.conf and find color true, change it to color false, brl apply, brl dash dash help and you'll notice that all the colors are gone. Most operations used to manage bedrock can be found in the brl command. This includes both those discussed earlier in the tutorial, as well as some which were skipped for brevity. After this tutorial, consider exploring BRL, going through other tutorials, BRL tutorial dash dash help, or reading through bedrock at cbedrock.com. And that's the tutorial for Bedrock Linux. As you can tell, it's a pretty interesting Linux distribution. It's quite fascinating because it's not a proper distribution, but it's just something you can install and it sort of just magically takes everything over. And I think that's really cool as a concept. And I definitely think it has an incredible potential for people who are more advanced about Linux and want to use various components from various systems. The examples given on the websites are things like fonts or libraries for running games or or something like that. But there's an incredible potential here for Bedrock Linux to do a lot of crazy things. So that was my basic look and I guess pseudo tutorial on Bedrock Linux. If you want more videos about Bedrock Linux or maybe a video about installing Debian and then converting it to Arch or, or something crazy like that, then be sure to leave a comment in the comment section telling me that, hey, that that's a pretty good idea. But anyway, I've been Denshi. Goodbye.